Hey, and welcome to Board with Life News for October 15th. Today I'm going to talk about the new game Empire Engine. I'm going to talk about a partnership between Steve Jackson Games and Garbage Pail Kids. I'm going to talk about Magic the Gathering, the strategy board game, and the Kickstarter for Lanterns, the Harvest Festival. Let's get to it. Hey, I'm Chris. Welcome to Board with Life News. Um, this week is Essen. This weekend is the big, huge game fair in Essen, Germany, and it is a huge deal, and therefore it's a pretty slow news week as far as board game news because we're going to get a ton of news and releases out of Essen, so there'll be a lot more in the coming weeks. If you're interested to see my top 10 most anticipated games for Essen, I did a video on that, and you can click on wherever the link on the screen is going to be. It's a thing that pops up. You're smart. I don't have to point to it. Um, and I ran through my top 10 most anticipated games coming out at Essen. Uh, we are going to be releasing the 10th episode of our D&D playthrough podcast um, tomorrow, so you can get links below to our iTunes or our podcast service and things like that, or you can just wait, and we've been releasing them on YouTube a little bit after the fact, um, but it's the same stuff, so if you prefer YouTube, you can just listen to them there. All right, let's get into board game news. AEG announced that they're going to be releasing the micro game Empire Engine. This is a very small game for two to four players. It's an action programming game. Uh, each person plays an empire that's powered by rotating gears and you have simultaneous action selection. Uh, and you can choose to attack, defend, salvage, export, collect resources, and all those things get you different points in various ways. Uh, this game was nominated for the Golden Geek for the best print and play game last year. So I guess AG's picking it up and doing an actual uh, production run of it. So that's pretty cool. Steve Jackson Games announced their partnership with Tops to release Garbage Pail Kids games. This is in uh, celebration of the Garbage Pail Kids 30th anniversary. The first game actually came out a couple days ago at New York Comic Con in a limited run, and it's called Stuper Snot Shots, and it's a dexterity game um, based in that world. And then they announced in 2015 they'll be releasing a game called Garbage Pail Kids Disgusting Dice Game um, that will obviously be a dice game. Uh, I guess people still like Garbage Pail Kids. It was really popular when I was young, uh, but I haven't heard much about them since then. Uh, I was always um, partial to Monsters in My Pocket. Uh, and I think somebody should make a Monsters in My Pocket game because I would, I probably won't play that because I bet it would be a bad game. But maybe if you made a good game, that would be fun. But don't, it's not good. Just don't worry about it. All right, moving on. So we got a very cryptic announcement about Magic the Gathering, the strategy board game. So the Magic Pro Tour, cons for Tarkir, uh, during their broadcast, there was an advertisement that came up uh, saying Magic the Gathering, the strategy board game. It had the date 10, 16, 14, which is tomorrow and it had Essen. So I guess we'll be getting more news out of Essen tomorrow about what that is. We might get a preview of the game. I highly doubt they'll be releasing the game because I haven't heard anything about that. Um, Wizards of the Coast did a really good job of translating, not even translating, but taking the world of Dungeons and Dragons uh, and making a board game out of it with Scoundrels of Skullport. Um, so I'd be interested to see what they're gonna do with Magic the Gathering, if this is gonna be a collectible board game my hunch is that it's going to be similar to Scoundrels of Skullport, where they just take kind of the world that they've built with Magic the Gathering and then have kind of a game set within that world that isn't directly related to any of the stuff. Um, no word if Richard Garfield, the designer of Magic, is going to be involved or anything like that, but I guess we'll know more tomorrow. This week's Kickstarter is for the beautifully simple Lanterns the Harvest Festival. This is a tile placement, hand management, and set collection game for two to four players. It's one of those just kind of brilliantly simple ideas with only a few mechanics that's uh, immediately apparent how to play and pick up on, yet there's a good depth of strategy that exists there. It is only $24 right now on Kickstarter, so if that sounds interesting to you, go check it out. All right, that's the news for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on iTunes, do all that good stuff. Links to all that jazz down below in the description. We've got new videos coming out every week. We've got new podcasts coming out every week. Um, we are a busy group. This week's question comes from at Gino Brancasio via Twitter. And he asks, if you could be in any board game, Jumanji style, what game and why? So I was thinking about this and I was going through my games it would have to be a game where there'd be no chance of uh, physical harm coming to me, which already rules out a huge amount of games. And then also I wouldn't be doing much physical labor, which rules out uh, kind of almost all the other games. I was thinking I'd be a farmer in Carcassonne because you just get to lay down in a field. Uh, Tokaido would be very, very pleasant because it's just about having a fulfilling, enriching journey down to through Tokaido, uh, the road Tokaido, which... Um, since the whole point of that game is just to kind of see pretty things and have a good experience. 
that one seems highly likely. Uh, board games are like my escapism for doing all that stuff where like fighting and all that or like a game like Pandemic would be just awful to live in Pandemic but it's a fun board game. So uh, yeah, it's, I guess it's kind of a boring choice because I'm not, you know, blowing up giant battle robots but I do that in games so that I don't have to like be blown up in real life. So that's why I do it in games. Alright, thanks so much for tuning in this week. I'll see you next week.